Welcome to Chemka UK channel. In this channel, we talk about issues that are topical and they are relevant to both the medical and non-medical communities. Today, we are going to talk about a very important subject which deals with the role of diet in COVID. As this is a new condition and not much is known about it, it would be very useful if you had a listen as to what the specialist uh, nutritionist has to say about this. I would hand you over to Abdullah, but before that, I would uh, ask uh, you to like, subscribe and pass it on if you like the content. We are going to talk about the dietary aspects of COVID-19. I've got a nutrition sport dietitian, Sarah Hill, with me today. Thank you very much, Sarah, for agreeing to talk to us. You're welcome. Thanks for asking me. So, Sarah, my first question is about BMI. And can you tell us, are there any observed differences in COVID-19 patients who had high BMI versus low BMI? So the differences I've noticed is the extremes of BMI are both associated with poorer outcomes. So low BMI, low body weight for height, or the clinically obese. Um, malnutrition prevalence in hospital is between 23 to 60%, depending on which study you look at. These patients are often have a low muscle mass as well, other comorbidities, and they do not do so well with infection. On the other side of things, of the scale, the observational studies suggest that people that are more at risk of coming into hospital with COVID-19 are people with dietary-related comorbidities, so obesity, hypertension, diabetes. Um, and these patients are not doing so well with, with their outcomes as well. So what I glean from this really is a healthy BMI is very important. So BMI between 20 and 25. Is there a quick boost to our immune system? A lot of people are asking this question. Um, if we take a particular vitamin like vitamin C or vitamin D or any other supplements. It would be great if there was a quick fix, but I think the answer is no. Um, so there are certain vitamins that are associated with an improved immune system, but, and the vitamins that you mentioned, so vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C, but people really shouldn't be taking them in isolation. It should be really about the whole healthy, balanced diet. I think there's been quite a lot of media coverage about vitamin D, um, because there is a trend with vitamin D deficiency and viruses like influenza and COVID-19 but we can't prove that relationship so therefore the, but the BDA do recommend so the British Dietetic Association do recommend if, if anyone's isolating or they can't get out into the sunshine for a period of 30 minutes or more that you should be taking a vitamin D supplement. Are there any observational studies which have shown any benefit of one particular diet over another? Um, unfortunately not, but I think as we were talking about vitamins and minerals before, the ideal diet would be a healthy balanced diet, so to contain a lot of vitamins and minerals, adequate energy and protein. And to achieve this, you really need to be eating a lot of fruit and vegetables, whole grain, carbohydrates, lean protein. And if you're sort of going for these sorts of foods, you naturally don't go for the high fat, high sugar sort of foods. So you will end up with a healthy, balanced diet. Again, relating to your earlier question about low BMI um, and high BMI. So if there are people that with a low BMI, they probably will need to increase their intake of healthy fats um, to try and increase their weight to put them at less risk of, of, sort of contracting um, any type of infection really. Now I'm going to invert my uh, last question and I'm going to ask that is there any particular diet which has proven to be harmful particularly in COVID-19 patients? Not especially, no, but I'd, I'd still recommend staying away from, from fad, fatty diets, so aiming for your healthy, balanced diet. Um, staying away from 
processed foods. Since lockdown, perhaps everyone has had some trouble obtaining food. Um, I know people have been comfort eating, comfort baking, um, which is, is understandable. But I think moving forward, we need to be thinking about, again, a healthy, balanced diet and trying to get back to some kind of normality. Thank you very much, Sarah, again. My last question is about, just to reiterate, uh, about the healthy diet for our uh, viewers. Can you tell us what is a healthy balanced diet? So on the British Dietetic Association, there is um, some fact, food fact leaflets, which go into a healthy balanced diet in more detail. They've also got a pictorial representation of a healthy balanced diet, um, which might be helpful. Um, but generally, it's basing a lot of your meals and snacks on fruit and vegetables. So we all should be aiming for five to 10 portions of fruit and vegetables. Um, a portion is generally the size of, you know, whatever will fit in your hand. So your hand will be slightly larger than mine because you will need slightly more. So it generally works, works out. And choosing carbohydrates that are complex carbohydrates, so they're full of fibre, full of the B vitamins and other nutrients. So thinking always choosing like whole wheat, um, bran, um, things like brown rice. Um, if you're going for bread, going for like seeded and whole grain. Then your protein sources, it's good to eat a variety of protein. Um, so including red meats, poultry, fish, lentils, pulses. And again, they will say the sort of palm of your hands or size is a substantial portion. Um, so fo focusing your main meals on these and then any sort of fats and sugars so it should actually form a very small part of your diet. So they should be, you know, you sort of treat foods and, and smaller proportion of your diet. The other thing along with a healthy balanced diet is exercise. So we're finding with some of the COVID-19 patients a massive amount of fatigue uh, and muscle wasting. So it's really important to try and do things like, like walking, also just some gentle arm exercises to try and preserve your skeletal muscle mass. And these patients who've had higher muscle mass seem to do better. As you've listened to this conversation, there is no quick fix to our immune system or to boost our immune system. It's just a process of maintaining a healthy, balanced diet and lots of exercise to keep you healthy without any diseases. So thank you very much again, and thank you, Sarah, for joining us to our show. Okay. Thanks a lot. Continue watching Kamki UK YouTube channel. Please subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon.